Okay, on this problem, what we're given is we're given an equation, x times y equals three. So we have both x and y involved in this equation. And we also know that dy dt is equal to two. Our goal is to find dx dt, the derivative of x with respect to t, when we're given an x value of five. So there are a couple different ways we could go about this. I'll try to illustrate both of them as we go through. So the first thing that we're gonna do is implicitly differentiate this. So I'm going to think of this as being f times g. We have two things multiplied together. So that's gonna imply that we're gonna use the product rule to implicitly differentiate. So that means the derivative of one times the other plus leave the first one alone multiplied by the derivative of the second one. All right, so being that I'm treating x as though it's our f function, taking its derivative is gonna be one dx dt because we took the derivative of x with respect to time. Then we multiply by g, in our case, that's just gonna be y, plus, now we take f, which is simply x, multiplied by the derivative of y, so that's one dy dt, and on the right-hand side, the derivative of three, a constant is gonna be zero. So we can fill in the information that we do know right now, uh, we're given that dy dt is going to be 2, and we're given that x is going to be 5. So we want to find dx dt, and filling in the information we do know, we know that we have 5 goes in for x, the 1 I'm going to kind of drop, because 1 times 5 will be 5, and then dy dt is going to be 2. So as you notice on this, we still have one too many unknowns. We're looking for dx dt, but we still don't know y either. So let's use the original equation, x times y equals three, and we can fill in here and that'll allow us to uh, solve for y. All right, so we are given an x value of five. So five times y equals three. By dividing on both sides, we can get y equals three fifths. That'll give us a value we can plug in here, dx dt times three-fifths plus 10 equals zero. A little bit of solving down and getting dx dt on one side by itself. We'll go ahead and say dx dt times three-fifths is going to be negative 10 as we subtract 10 to move that to the other side. Next, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by five. Multiplying will counteract this dividing by five, thus getting rid of our fraction. So d x dt times three equals negative 50. And then dividing both sides by three, we'll get dx dt on one side by itself. And there we have dx dt. Now I wanted to show you one other possible way to do this particular problem. Being that we started with d uh, y or x times y equals three, x times y equals three, and our goal was to find dx dt. What we could do is we could first go ahead and get x on one side all by itself. So we could say x equals three divided by y. So x is gonna be three times y to the negative first power, just using an exponent rule to move it up to the exponent. And then if we differentiate each side with respect to t, we get dx dt, one dx dt on the left-hand side. And then we bring the constant along and we can use the power rule with y to the negative first power. So we can bring the ne negative one comes down and multiplies by the three. So negative three y to the negative second power as we reduce the exponent by one. All right, now we're still gonna have to do that same work to get, um, to get y. And I also need to do, this was the derivative of y with respect to t. So let's plug in the information that we found. Up here, we had done the, the work previously to get y is equal to 3 fifths when our, our x value is 5. So we can plug in here and we can say dx dt is equal to negative 3 over y squared times dy dt. So we can say negative 3 over 3 fifths quantity squared multiplied by dy dt that was given to us to be two. So overall we can say negative six 
thinking of this as a fraction of multiplying numerators, multiply denominators over nine twenty-fifths as I square the three and I square the five, which will equal negative six times 25 over nine, which eventually is gonna reduce down to that negative 50 thirds. So a couple different ways to go about and get the same answer. It's just whether you want to get X on one side all by itself first, or if you wanna jump straight into implicit differentiation, uh, we can get to the same exact answer two different ways. All right, hope this helps.